Bombshell and Black Christmas are sticking it to the man. This weekend at the box office, there's tons of new movies opening, but I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about Bombshell and Black Christmas for the sole reason that they have a common theme between them. And that's in this new Me Too movement, I think we're seeing the product of that movement at the movies. And there's a slew of movies coming out actually that are going to not touch upon that particular subject, but how these characters deal with it. There's obviously the new movies, Bombshell and Black Christmas. And then in 2020, we have Young Promising Woman. If you have not seen that, you gotta watch it. Uh, it stars Carrie Mulligan, like we've never seen her before. And essentially she goes for these guys who go who seek drunk women and take advantage of them it's it's a great trailer you got to watch it it's like it's a horror movie i think she turns into sort of a serial killer i love it um and then there's another movie called the assistant um julie garner i believe from ozark she's a really good actress if you haven't watched that show you gotta watch that show she's really um really a breakout on that show and that's called The Assistant that's next year as well I think in January so things I like the direction that this is going uh, we're seeing a lot of movies this year that were really good directed by women I think the Me Too movement is spawning a new generation I mean the film the women directors and writers were always there but the point was who's giving them the chance and I think it's happening now now, the first movie I'm gonna tackle is Black Christmas. This has been remade already in 2006, I believe. Um, I think I watched it, I don't remember. It must not have been that memorable. It's based on an original movie in 1974. Um, it starred Olivia Hussey and Margot Kidder of Superman fame. And they've done a modern take on this. It's directed by indie director Sophia, what is her name, Takal and co-written with April Wolf. And they take an interesting turn on this one. Um, I really liked it. It got to the point of some ridiculous plots, but it worked to get the message across. And basically they're modernizing it by, okay, let me explain the story first. So a sorority house um, is being stalked by a stranger now it's over the Christmas holiday, people have gone home, so of course there's the strays that are staying be uh, behind. And they're the target of some malicious man, person, who's sending them texts. And essentially what they've done in this movie is turned it into a commentary about, not so much a commentary, it's entertaining, but it takes on the whole date rape culture and fraternities Fraternities do not look good in this movie, that's for sure. And I loved it because I always thought uh, fraternities were, I mean, in my opinion, for women are not a great place to be. And that's why I avoided it in the college because I just didn't like, even back then in the 90s, you heard about the rape culture. You heard about people being too drunk and, and being taken advantage of. So this is not new. It's just that now people are speaking out against it. And this movie does that perfectly. Um, there's some supernatural elements to it and the themes um, are really relevant. Uh, it's described as a slasher film. It is a slasher film, but you don't see much gore, which I'm sure will not uh, settle well with horror fans. It's a different type of horror film. It's a different take. <clears throat> and, you know, women have directed horror films before, but I think the fact that they're taking up this mantle in this movie and there's some hilarious moments. It's sort of a satire meets a slasher film. This movie really makes you think about the horror genre in general, because if you really think about it, it's always a female in the lead who's being stalked by a man. So isn't that funny that they kind of turn the tables on them in this movie and women always find a way to outsmart them. But the point is that this movie really turns things on its head. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm so happy Blumhouse took this chance in making this movie because a lot of studios might have turned it down, of course, for obvious reasons, because it's not your traditional slasher film. 
the women take it back and they create their own narrative here and i really enjoyed it like i said it does get ridiculous at some points while some of the stuff is very on on the nose it's it's done on purpose to get across a point and i think it was really smart and smartly written and you'll recognize what i think they were trying to do although some people won't some people said that they didn't like the movie but it's not subtle <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but that's what I liked about it. Because it is a horror movie slash slasher film. So you can't be subtle in those ways. You have to go for it. And they did. Which is what I enjoyed about it. Like I said, there were some laughable moments. But overall, I think it was a really a job well done. And now on to Bombshell. Let me tell you, after I watched this movie, I was so disgusted. If you don't know, it's the story about uh, Roger Ailes, a Fox News head who, oh, probably the wrong word, who sexually harassed women for decades in order for them to move up. And watching this just reminded me what kind of a sick world we live in where men, they take advantage of women like this. And I've seen it happen at the workplace, not as bad as you see in, uh, in this movie or what you hear, you know, what was described um, by Gretchen Carlson and Megan Kelly, but it was, I just came out feeling so dirty, like, this is disgusting, can I believe this happens, hopefully in the future this uh, does not happen. So it's based on the accounts of Gretchen Carlson and Megan Kelly's accounts of uh, their experience at Fox News as a, as a female anchor. And it doesn't, it, while they're both, they both have books about the subject, I think the writer, and I'm sorry, I, don't, I didn't write down his name, he took a bunch of stories and kind of put them together. Uh, Nicole Kidman plays Gretchen Carlson, and Charlize Theron did a great job playing Megyn Kelly. I totally forgot it was Charlize Theron, um, because she was actually sort of likable, because I'm not a Megyn Kelly fan, and I think she made it work so for what it is because I don't think she's got the best um, reputation out there but the struggle that they went through as a woman you can completely relate to now Roger Ailes is played by John Lithgow and he plays it very well and that I don't think I can look at John Lithgow anymore in the same way it's going to take me another movie to get that image of him out of my head and basically they chronicle how things work at Fox News for women and that they had a certain dress code they always had to show legs and part of getting to anchor a show is basically you have to strut around for Roger Ailes you have to show him his leg in the case of Margot Ritter's character not Margot Ritter Margot Robbie's character She's actually a fictional character. I, I think she's a, a, a combination of certain um, people there, so, so their accounts. And what she goes through, my God, it's horrifying to see what she has to do in front of Roger Ailes because she's got ambition. She wants to be an anchor and she's willing to pretty much step over her coworker. She doesn't care about that kind of stuff. But when she gets to pretty much audition for Roger Ailes you can see the terror on her face and and like a deer in headlights she continues doing it why we can't say I mean this happens to a lot of women but and you can't judge I personally kicked in the balls but that's me um, but these women are in fear of losing their job they have one character who is offered a promotion by a different producer at, at Fox News. And she's very grateful, they're at dinner, and then he proposes they go to his hotel room to hash out the details. And she politely states, oh, I'm sorry, I don't, you know, I, it's against my policy to go into hotel rooms, I don't think it's very professional, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, I feel like a creep, it's okay. Don't worry about it. The next day she was fired. It's a hard movie to watch, I'm not gonna lie. And it doesn't give you a solution as to what women should do in those cases. Obviously, if you report it, you can be retaliated. That's 
the whole point of this movie is there's retaliation when you're when you report such things and I've seen it in the workplace I'm not gonna say where but I've seen it and managers were sent to a sexual harassment class and they came back and they still did it I was just I'm amazed that people don't understand and I don't think men will understand in those positions of power what they think they're doing they think anyway I'm not gonna get into it so I highly recommend Bombshell and Black Christmas. It really adds to the conversation that we're having in this Me Too, Me Too movement. And I think we're going to see a lot of more films that kind of deal with this. And I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, a bunch of other films are opening this weekend as well. Richard Jewell, really good movie by Clint Eastwood. I think it's one of his best. Although I liked, I liked The Mule. Um, but not as much as Richard Jewell. It's based on the true story of the name Richard Jewell who was accused of being the Atlanta bomber during the Olympics back in the 90s turns out it was false so it's about injustice and it'll really piss you off again as to what our agencies are doing to coerce confessions when it's an innocent person a lot of those movies coming out Just Mercy really good movie too that'll anger you as well and I'll do a roundup of those movies that are coming out about injustice and then you have Adam Sandler in a groundbreaking performance in Uncut Gems. He was really, really good in it. It's a tough movie to watch uh, because there's a lot of violence. And the music is awesome. Listen to the music. It's really funky. But it goes with the cinematography and the story and Adam Sandler I hope gets an Academy Award nomination he was looked over for the Golden Globes but I you know people should consider the fact that he's done something very different from what we're used to seeing him and he was really good and he brought in some funny moments as well um, in addition to being dramatic and uh, I think he deserves some kind of recognition because it's a good movie and it's a good performance since the holidays are coming up and you're wondering what movie to see this holiday season, go to cinemovie.tv for our list of must-see movies this season.